this sucker up, huh? You got it. No problem, no problem. Just gotta check the gas line. Might have had it up a little bit high. <laughs> you guys meet me back here with some ground beef and some comfortable shoes and uh, maybe an apron for me so we all kind of have a uniform. Oh, that gives me an idea. Bob, I gotta go up to the apartment real quick. Be right back. Okay, Bob, grab your meat. Please don't shout that at me. Right, right, grab your meat. Hello, D23! Thank you for coming. Sorry for the delay. We are so glad to be here. Let me bring out, if you don't mind, oh, hi, John Benjamin. He plays Bob. Oh! What does he have? Sandwiches. Kristen Shaw, she plays Louise. Yeah. Larry Murphy, he plays Teddy. Yeah. Eugene Merman, he plays Gene. He plays Tina! And from the behind the scenes, from behind the scenes, our head of production, she does everything all the time, Janelle Mamory. We like the behind the scenes people. We give them time on the stage. Our supervising director, director, co-director on the movie, Bernard Derriman. Welcome him, please. We are so glad to be here. Some of us just got here this very second. A lot, a lot of drama, right? It was an interesting morning. Yeah. Let's just say the alarm didn't go off, and I woke up when I was supposed to be pulling into the parking lot. We all live together, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, this is. We are, first of all, it's very nice to be with everyone in person. This is a big deal, as you know. We couldn't even make it to Comic-Con this year. We count on these events to be together with you all. Uh, this is when our job becomes real to us. It is rather abstract uh, until we get to these events. So thank you again for coming. I really appreciate it. We have a few clips. Uh, and we'll chat, we'll get chatting amongst ourselves, try to deliver uh, uh, these guys to you. Um, but then we also want you uh, to step to the mic at the end of this and, and ask your questions, and we really want to hear from you. So get your questions ready, uh, and, and we, we are going to make plenty of time for that. Right, and just to, the, and the best question does win a ranch turkey club. <laughs> Or a vegetarian something. Oh, so get those two questions. prizes. Yeah. Two those prizes will ready. be judged by you. And we only have time for yeah, 1,250 well. questions. Uh, all right. I want to. I guess the first thing I was thinking about while I drove here with my blood pressure racing, <laughs> weaving in between cars, trying to shave a few minutes. Uh, was I, I really love this job, and I, I feel um, thrilled to be able to do it, but I often wonder... Is that why you slept in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was demonstrating my dedication. It, it, it was shows drawing how much you Bob's care when mustache you... <laughs> till 3 a.m. <laughs> I went to bed early. That's the crazy thing. I, uh, what happened? What, I don't know. What I, went apparently wrong? I needed 11 hours of sleep. Did you take a drug, like an Ambien? No, no, I take no drugs. I drink wine, as you know. So how much did you drink? The normal amount, which let's, you know. Well, normal is what, like two to three bottles? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I cracked the third bottle. I don't think I did. Okay, so that's yeah. fairly normal. Yeah. No, that wouldn't, that wouldn't like, you wouldn't sleep for like 24 hours. Exactly. After two bottles of wine. And I can tell you, if you wake up at 11 and you're supposed to be somewhere at 11, you wake right up. So I, f I didn't feel hungover, I guess is what I'm saying. I had a lot of adrenaline immediately. And he tripped on the stairs, too. Banged, so banged something this. is definitely wrong. Yeah, I was like, you've got this, you're here, you made it. And the guy was like, oh, go. And I went, bam! 
Yeah. It's not bleeding, but let's not look. Uh, but let, let's talk about the show. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm sorry. Uh, what I was going to say is this. I find uh, the job to be strange. Every once in a while, I'm like, what an odd job this is. All of us. And I occasionally wonder, what even is animation? How does it work? Why does anyone even like it? You know what I mean? It's a trick that we play on our eyes in which we think these drawings are moving, and then we use voices to kind of convince ourselves that they're that they're person, you know? Uh, it's... I, and I think... It, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Okay, okay. It's symbolism, I think, that makes it work. You know what I mean? It's not just the, the frames per second and the illusion of life. I think it's also the, what, the shows that last, the shows that draw a few folks to a room like this must have something else going on. Here's my premise. Here's my question. The premise is, are these characters symbols? And if so, for what? John Benjamin, what does Bob symbolize? <laughs> You have 34 minutes. <laughs> Is this Lincoln Douglas style? <laughs> yes, we'll debate. Uh, I, oh, wow. Um, uh, America? <laughs> you know, that's not half bad. He's got, he's got an, I mean, Bob's Burgers is like the most American. Pretty much, yeah. I guess uh, uh, pr pr primitive man. I don't know. <laughs> Kristen, what does Louise symbolize, you think? Uh, thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> and thanks for giving us time to uh, think about it. I, I guess capitalism. Um, she, you know, she's, she's ambitious. She's very competitive. You know, you could say capitalism is definitely destroying this country, but at the same time, we got the vaccine first, so... <laughs> Larry, what does Teddy symbolize? I get this a lot. Um, uh, probably the human condition. Yeah. In some way, he does. He's the every man. He's the every yes. man. Yeah. Eugene, what about Gene? You want to take a crack? Gene, uh, he symbolizes uh, the child we all wanted to be. <laughs> He's so comfortable with being the oddball that he is, and, and I, uh, I like that about him. How about Tina and Dan? Do you have thoughts? Um, puberty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. These are good answers. You did, you did very well, Cass. Janelle, what do you think that animation, do you think, how do you think animation works? Have you thought about this? Does the symbolism of it work? Is it just we like pretty colors? Have you thought about this at all? I think it's all of it. The Bob's family resembles our family in real life, too. Every personality trait of the Belchers, I have someone in my family that has that trait, too. Yeah, that's true. We got we kind of got lucky with that, where the you can find yourself or your spouse or your sibling in the family somehow. We do get that a lot from you folks. People say I'm such a Linda, or my kid is such a Gene, or whatever. Bernard, what do you think? This is your life's work. <laughs> is it as strange to you as it is to me? <laughs> it is. It's. I. I think the pretty pictures help. Uh, <laughs> my wife tells people that I draw pictures for a living, so it's like very. I come from a very simple, when you start talking about symbolism, I'm just not going to talk about that, but uh, yeah, I think, I think everyone grows up on cartoons and then they just keep watching them and I think when you have a show like Bob's that really appeals to the whole family, it's an opportunity for everyone to keep watching it, so it's great. Bernard hates symbolism. I <laughs> do, I really so, do. Don't get him going on He's Carl like, Jung. Don't ask me, don't ask me, don't ask me. Ask me, that's Bernard's brain be, all the time. If we were Batman, it would have been much easier to answer the symbolism <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, all right, let's show a clip. We brought a few clips, everyone. This is upcoming episodes. We are... We're going to start with uh, a clip from, I believe, our, our premiere. Is that right? Yeah, this is from our premiere, To Bob or Not To Bob, as you can imagine, is inspired by Shakespeare, and in fact, there is uh, some really bad Shakespeare in here. Uh, this is a color clip, and let me, uh, what I mean by that is we colored it in. Uh, Bob and Linda and the kids rehearse 
uh, a play that Mr. Fishoder has commissioned, and he has commissioned it uh, to be performed in the store next door to the restaurant, and it is all for uh, his nefarious purposes. He is not a, a, a patron of the arts in any way. He does not uh, really care about the, the process. He has his own ends in mind. Let's watch the clip. Okay. In this scene, it's nighttime and Calviticus is asleep. Tina, that's you with the super cute eye patch I made last night. So uh, I lay down on those chairs. Mm. Sorry, without my glasses and with the eye patch, I'm kind of blind. I loved it. I fall out of bed all the time from drinking too much limoncello. Tina, put your glasses on over the patch. It'll be a fun look. Now it says here, enter the ghost of Papa Fishodatin. Bob, that's you. You want to say your line? Come, my largest and best son, and I will show you a hideous crime. Bob, can you say that more ghostly, maybe? A little more ghostly. Right. Uh, come. Uh, no, no, I was wrong. Do it the first way. Back to it. Okay. All right, so Bob, you make a pointy gesture towards Louise. So, point? Give it some flair. Don't just point. Yeah, Bob, give it some flair. Behold, my smaller yucky child. He would commit an abomination. Now, Louise, you come in and steal the trophy off the mantle. Yep, got it. Oh, good prop. Thank you. And Jean, this is your big line as the German maid. Oh, hello. Lixicas, what is under your jacket? Some chocolate. Give me yum yum. Okay, now everyone freezes. And Bob, you step into the spotlight for your ghostly monologue. Calvin, I kissed this very night Ooh, there. Uh, not like that. No. Okay, we should go open the restaurant. Are you happy with it, Mr. Fashoda? It's really getting there, huh? Well, I was asleep during the last part, but I assume it was what it was. To Bob or not to Bob? Do we have a date on that? When's that premiere? September 24th, 5th, sorry. September 25th, it's this month. We're back in fall. You all watch, do, do you folks watch it on the, on the Fox Network? Do you watch Bob's Burgers when it airs? Hey, give me a show of hands. Oh, and there's so many of you. Uh, and the rest of you see it on the Hulu? Yeah, I see. I see. We got some streamers. And then some of you, oh, wait, a big hand. You trying to get my attention? No. The, uh, I think uh, the rest of you just pirated. <laughs> it's fine, by the way. It's totally fine. Uh, we're um, we're, we're um, making this thing and frequently uh, approached by people who are interested in animation. And I always uh, evangelize, try to use opportunities like this to talk about the, the work as something that you um, should do because I believe it is a, a great job. I love this work, and anyone who ever expresses interest, I always try to lean in and say, yes, 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 there's probably a role for you. There's probably a great career for you. Uh, I know some of you just want to hear your, these people talk, and you don't want to be uh, recruited. But for those of you that are interested in the work, I want to just uh, run down the, the line with these folks, because I've heard them give advice, and like, for example, Eugene Merman, best advice I ever heard, someone says, how do you get it, I want to do voiceover on a cartoon, what should I do? And Eugene said, in my case, uh, what worked was uh, do 15 years of stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's great advice. It, it is actually true. It is actually good advice. Uh, don't try to do voiceover cold, for example, uh, just because you, you know, figured out how to do a silly voice or something like that. Do 15 years of stand-up comedy, and then you might uh, really be ready, really ready for, for your uh, role on, a, on an animated show. John, you can make this up. Advice to young people or, or mid-career switchers who want to come into animation from your point of view. Well, I can tell you how I came up. Uh, I met Lauren. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity right now for anyone who's interested to rush the stage, I suppose, <laughs> and ask for work, like immediately. You have uh, 26 minutes left I'm reading, uh, to pitch him on. <laughs> yes, he's the guy. I, don't, I wouldn't be doing this uh, without him. Uh, so uh, that's an unfortunate answer because you have to meet one guy. <laughs> there it is, John's advice. I don't don't take it. By the way, don't take his advice. <laughs> Kristen, what about you? Um, well, well, for me to get into uh, voice acting, I'm in the same uh, school of, as Eugene, where I also just did my own stand-up until I met like a group of people um, who weren't making cartoons yet, but they would eventually, and we were all friends. And so when the time came, I got, I got to uh, jump onto the train. But 
I think for anyone pursuing animation or anything that is their passion, I would say to not shy away from that. And that even if you're not going to eventually be um, whatever the dream was, you will still be on the path of the same creativeness that you're being pulled to and you will find your pl a place there for you will open up if you just believe in it. Um, so just keep going and also don't make choices, uh, this is hard to say, but um, don't let money be the deciding factor. You know, like everybody kind of got out of college and joined Wall Street and now we're here. <laughs> um, but like, you know, if you're like, I, 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 I want to do this, but it won't pay enough. I have to do this. I mean, I, I, know, I know we still have to pay our bills, but I don't know, just like, just jump. I agree with that. I agree with that. Larry, how about you? Do, you? do people come up to you and ask you for advice? Um, no, but it's not going to stop me from giving you it. You went out. Yeah, uh, I, I would say that both what Kristen said is, is definitely be, pa be find a passion, but really I think that being passionate and kind of staying the course and then some form of luck will happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Eugene. Um, well, I would say find your community of people, like find people like-minded and also make things, like figure out how to, you know, now you can make your own animation. You can find people who are interested in animation. If you want to get into it, just start doing it and make another thing and another thing until you get better and better. Yeah, um, you don't need to go to film school, by the way. He's absolutely right. But those communities are out there, uh, I think, even in the shadows. They're not just in programs. So I think you... you yeah, you don't have to go to, like, the dark web or anything. Just, I think there's like software. <laughs> but there are a lot of jobs on the dark web, though. <laughs> don't, don't do that. But yeah, well, I two would people say... do need a hitman now and again. True. Yeah. So I think I think we've been pretty helpful. <laughs> How about you, Dan? I mean, for me, it, it would be be friends with John Benjamin because he's the one recommended me <laughs> to Lauren. Uh -huh. um, but I guess a general thing, it's um, just a general version of what everyone's saying is, you know, it, you don't have to do 15 years of stand-up, but you want to do as many, as many different things as possible that play to your strength because each one has such a, you know, not a huge chance of working out, but just do, even if it's not the, exactly what you pictured yourself doing in your career, as long as it's somewhat adjacent, you know, try, might as well try it. Janelle, you hire all of them. What, what, do you give advice? Do people come to you for advice? And, and if so, it, what advice would you give to the folks out here who might be thinking about this? And, and evangelize, too, if you will. Uh, let's try to pull some over the line that were thinking about it but hadn't committed until today. Well, it is a great career to make cartoons, whether you're an artist, a writer, voice talent. There is 135 people that make Bob's Burgers, the series, and all sorts of different specialties. So I think like Kristen said, if you're passionate about it, ask questions, talk to people in the industry, and find what niche is right for you and your skill set, because there most likely is within animation. Yeah. Bernard, what about you? Uh, first of all, it's so much better than the symbolism question. <laughs> I, got it. I like it so much more. Um, yeah, I, I always say that the best thing, um, at least from if you're in, interested in actually animating and animation, is doing some of your own shorts. That's how I started. Um, I would just, yeah, you're doing some, you just do these little one minute, two minute shorts, download jokes. I'd, I used to download comedians jokes on YouTube and then animate those. and you'd make some that suck and the beauty of it is with YouTube, you just put them on YouTube, people can look at them and then you start doing better ones and people start seeing them and you start getting some hits and you, you work out. It's Bernard, it's called stealing content. <laughs> what you're dealing. I was thinking that too, yeah. You guys should animate the movie The Godfather <laughs> and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's and that's uh, yeah, that's the best way to that's the best way I think to get an animation. And and I did I did the same thing, did shorts, and I I think I, I did a short um, dancing rabbit. I don't know. It, it's called Everyone Else Has Had More Sex Than Me. It was like a little animated short dancing rabbit. And then I 
I got an agent from that, and then I got a job on Bob's. So it's a fact. It's the facts, people. And and do switch careers. By the way, if you're if you're in your career and you love it, stay. But if you are don't if you're not happy, animation is ready to consider your skills, and you might have. Uh, the, the, the switching career people we love, by the way, just to say it, because then you're bringing something from somewhere else, and that's always great. The, the bartending that I did prepared me for production, you know? And so you, there's, I think, you know, if you're in an engineering program and you just hate fucking engineering, it's still <laughs> going to be a good background. I'm sure of this. I know I'm, I'm selling too much. Are you low on staff right now? Is yes! <laughs> This is like a crazy, yes. <laughs> aggressive pitch. Yes. We're in the army or the The marine. whole industry is short and shorthanded in all, in all roles. Oh. Yeah. It's a big deal. Uh, let's, shoot, let's watch another clip. This is <laughs> from an episode. By hardly anybody. <laughs> called uh, barely animated. Yeah. There's nobody working. Well, stop. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till next. Next season, this is like the stick figures. <laughs> or the rabbit thing. <laughs> Just air that. Uh, speaking of stick figures, this is an animatic forum. You all are familiar with animatics. You're a savvy audience. Uh, this is from an episode we call Cheaty Cheaty Bang Bang. Uh, the kids are stuck in the house during a snowstorm. It's a school, you know, school's been called off. It's a snow day. I think that's all you need to know. Let's take a look. We need your help. I'm kind of busy. Staring outside like someone in a commercial for irritable bowels? Yeah. Well, we need you to go get every single pillow and blanket you can find. We're building a pillow and blanket for it because playing in the snow didn't really work out. <laughs> so if we're going to enjoy this day, we have to stay warm. And the first step to winter survival is making a shelter. I learned that from the movie where that guy died because he didn't build a shelter. Some say the first step is tacos. No, thanks. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh... Tina, it's going to be a really long day if you spend it wishing you were talking to you know who about you know what. She's talking about how that girl Chelsea thinks you're a cheater. Uh. Come on, Tina. You can sulk inside our fort. That you build most of. But also, please don't sulk inside our fort. We're trying to curate kind of a non-sulky vibe slash experience. Uh, fine. There's our girl. Good. Let's go right into the next clip. Uh, I want to get to your questions. This clip is uh, bu this from the same episode, from Chidi Chidi Bang Bang. Bob calls Teddy because their heater is out on that particular day. Uh, let's take a look. Thanks for calling back, Teddy. Yeah, it's broken, broken. Do you think you could come? Bob, I've literally had this exact dream. Your heater breaks, I rush over, Lind is scared, and so are you, but I look you both in the eyes and I say, shh, shh, I'm here, it's okay. And we all hold hands while I fix your heater. I don't know how I do it with no hands. Maybe I use my feet. Mm-hmm. So can you come over? I can't. It's all I want to do right now, but I'm headed to a job. Ah, oh, why do I take jobs? Oh, my God. But don't worry. I know an HVAC guy who's really good. But you know, he's a sweet man. Maybe a little sensitive. But what does that mean? Jace, don't razz him. I know you like to razz, Bob. No, I don't razz. You roast? You razz? <laughs> Teddy, that's not true. Ask anybody. Teddy, I just want our heater to work. I'll send you his number. Oi, I hit the brakes like 20 seconds ago, and I'm still skidding. I just slid right by my exit. Still not stopping. Teddy, be careful. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to gently steer into the guardrail. Teddy, don't do that. Hell of a time for a roast, Bobby. That wasn't a roast. I'm just about to go into a guardrail and you're razzing me. Oh, I regain control. But I should probably go. <laughs> All right. There's microphones. Or there's a microphone. I can't tell if there's another one over there. But get yourselves in front of it. Get your questions ready. Be nice to each other. Line up nicely. Yes, you in the, with the scary face. <laughs> if you need people for what we do in the shadows, Kristen, hey. Yeah, right OK. Right I got yeah, it. you look I got my good. fangs on. <laughs> nice. So I really want to go back to you talking about how um, you need voiceover people. I was literally about to bum rush the stage. I am so passionate about it. I was curious. Um, so I graduated and got my bachelor's in animation back in 2020 during the pandemic. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> and um, 
due to the pandemic, a lot of internships and stuff like that was like canceled or postponed. I was curious, does Bob's Burgers do like apprenticeships or internships for voiceover for like college people so they can like get in the business and learn and um, like work with you guys and get tips and tricks and stuff like that? I don't think Bob says anything like that. We not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> we we we. There's this. You know. There's a obviously the whole thing in the business about not making people work for free. It's a it's controversial because some of those um, opportunities uh, are great. You know. But it what it what it does is it rewards people who have the means to. You know, uh, uh, having uh, unpaid internships rewards people who can afford to not work. And so it is con it's controversial for a reason, and it has been mostly eliminated for pretty good reason. Okay. Um, but we, you know, w what we should do is get our shit together and figure out how to have something that we can put out online. Uh, it takes a lot of work to do that, so we haven't been had time. But I think that's the kind of thing that Bob's would be able to offer. But in the meantime, take their advice. It's not about an intern, you know, for voiceover, if you're doing voiceover, do yeah. 15 years of stand-up comedy. <laughs> don't, don't commit yourself to a career of a thing you don't want, but record a lot of, I would say, like, just make it, find animators and do, and make cartoons okay. on your own. Just yeah. make, like, one-minute cartoons with you, you doing the voice. If you need anybody right now, I'm here right now. <laughs> I got a card, you know, let's, let's do this. You know yourself. <laughs> make it. Make the thing. Yeah. I will. I'll do it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, welcome. What's your question? Hi, y'all are great. Love this show. Uh, my question is, uh, you, since you guys have been doing this for so long now, what scenes from Bob's Burger that didn't make the actual episode that you wish was on uh, an episode in the future or wish was included in some sort of the series? Mm. Uh, I have an answer for that. Oh, okay. There was, and it was animated, but it never made it on. There's a scene where me and Kristen and Dan are talking about visiting our grandparents, and everyone's listing what they like, why they love to visit. And like somebody says, like, oh, they give me five dollars, whatever. And then Gene says, and I think I laughed a little when I said, I said, they let me eat as much Tylenol PM as I want. <laughs> and. It got Almost an, made it in. It, it got animated, uh, and it was so close. And then I think someone was like, "We can't suggest that to children." So and, and close, I was though. Like, we were so close. We really laughed hard, and we were like, "Yeah, yeah, sure. We don't want kids to eat a lot of Tylenol PM, but can we still do this joke?" Yeah. So I. I there that. you go. Awesome. Here's the Thank answer. You. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Love the show. My question's for Bob. Uh, who do you like playing the most, Bob or Archer? And if, and if so, are you guys planning any more crossover events, future seasons? Well, I'm on the Bob's panel right now, so I'll say. Uh, you can answer free, uh, safely. They're not going to hurt you. Well, I'm not sure I believe what you you're saying. You don't know right that? Now. Yeah. <laughs> That's not it. I've, I've fallen for that trick before. <laughs> Um, you know, they're both really fun to play uh, and then very different. I mean, Bob uh, records in a different manner, or at least he used to before the pandemic, where we all got to kind of perform together, which Archer does not do. So um, it's always fun to uh, do scenes live with the rest of the cast and Lauren. And, uh, so yes, Archer is better. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any plans for any crossover event? In well, that I, I don't make those decisions. Uh, I, I believe the Archer Bob's crossover was devised by Archer, right? Yeah, we're, we're sort of crossover phobic. I'm so sorry. I know I disappoint so many people when we say that and admit that. I always try to figure out a way to give you guys a little, like a taste of a crossover, but a, it, the full blown Z's crossover. Crossovers for me just make me feel like the worlds are suddenly not real, and we spend so much time trying to make them feel real. So crossovers are hard for us, but we did love the Archer one. So maybe they'll do one, <laughs> since they're his fans. We'll do another one. We'll do it now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. It's good to see you guys in person. Same, <laughs> same to you. Um, nice to see Bob's got a new phone in the upcoming episode. Yeah, continuity, baby. It's in, his old one's in the ocean. Maybe we'll fish it out. Um, 
This is sort of a question towards John, who's not here. So, Lauren, I'll ask you. Okay. Will Linda ever work on her reflexes and not get hit in the face so many times? <laughs> <laughs> Poor lady. She's she's taking a lot of shots to the face. But, you know, I don't think it's because she's uh, her reflexes are slow. I always imagine she's fairly athletic. I think she just puts herself in harm's way. You know what I mean? She's an active person. She's just out there taking shots. And so, you know, she's going to get hit. She's going to get hit. Poor lady. But she doesn't seem to suffer any permanent damage, so that's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just Hi. have a question for the cast. Um, with all the musical talent, and I'm going to assume that you also give examples for your dancing talents as well, has Bob's Burger ever considered taking it to Broadway? Bob's Burgers has taken it on the Broadway. road. And we have performed live in theaters with these folks. And they are wonderful. They're really uh, very brave and, and very talented performers uh, doing the music and doing, just like you said, the dancing. Yeah. They can do it all. They've They're got highly skilled. Exactly. I think you would love a musical. Uh, well, I, I mean, the fact that I have not walked those boards. <laughs> I would love to do a Broadway show. It would be amazing. Oh, we would I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Does anyone ever do I was like there at three that nights performance. and then it's done? Or do you have to do like forever? Good question. Yeah, we would only be able we'll to do it like. Anything. Oh, she'll take anything. You'll go to New York to watch yeah, our Broadway show. Percent, yeah. Sure, we'll do three nights on Broadway. Three nights on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. We're doing it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. You made it happen. So Huge. Jackman as Bob. <laughs> Hugh Jackman as <is> Gene Belcher. <laughs> Hi, nice outfit. Thank you. What a coincidence. Uh, I am like <laughs> such a big fan. This is literally all I watch on my free time. So I've watched every season at least three times. So I'm like. That's a lot of free time. <laughs> exactly. I don't have anything better to do except watch you guys. <laughs> But I, since I've watched all of the seasons, I just want to know what is your guys' favorite season? Mm. Does anybody have a favorite season? I try not to, I'll just announce for myself, I try not to pick favorites. You, you feel towards all of them as if they were your babies and, and you would never want to pick a favorite. Uh, does anyone ha I mean, also, we don't think of them in seasons as much as perhaps the viewer does. You know, it's a flow for us. We work full time year, all year round. Um, so we often don't know whether we're in season <laughs> three or five or eight. It's very, very um, fluid for us. So it may be hard to answer this question. I will say this. We know it's changing and it's interesting to watch it change because we almost have no control over it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's an organic growth where you just say like, we're just going to make Bob's Burgers the best we can. And we know that in season 13, it's going to be a little different than season three. And you just try to embrace them all and hope that when you come here, a clip plays funny and, you know, that the fans find stuff uh, in each season. That's the best I'll I can. I'll tell you my least favorite season. <laughs> <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> I know. How did that show get picked up? <laughs> there you go. You didn't you, ask for it, but you, you got so the much. least favorite. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hey, I'm actually just here for the sandwich. And oh! Oh, that you is the wrong the question sandwich. to win a sandwich. Okay, so <laughs> I'm really hungry. So it's a terrible a strategy. I know. The, the Everyone's hungry, man. Good. It's you got to bring it. The chicken, right, but bring it. We'll consider so, it. Okay. Um, since we saw a Bob's Burger movie in the Bob's Burgers universe, if they were going to make a movie in the universe about the Belcher family. What would each of the Belichers pick to cast as themselves in that in that movie within that universe? Like, what? Well, who would? Are Bob you pitching us Inception? Not getting yes. the sandwich. <laughs> but which I'm... which actor who they would love to see themselves uh, in that movie in that universe? Wait, start over? No, don't start over. Are they I they cartoon uh, actors? If the kids if were the, making the... the movie, who would they cast? But they couldn't play themselves. So we, so I'd have to be like Christian Bale as Gene. You got it. He would transform himself. He would starve himself until he shrank down. 
Hugh Jackman, I guess, would be Bob, yeah. since you're yeah. Hugh Jackman. I, I don't know if that question's worth the turkey. Maybe the vegetarian one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's tough. Well, I forgot that we were. We, were you tracking the first six questions? Oh yes. Oh good. Okay, yeah. so you're going to announce the winner. You know who you you I already. I mean, Eugene and I had the only sandwiches, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we got two to give away. All right. So we at the end, so you I may remember. or may not have won a sandwich. I do remember. All right. Cross fingers. Cross Thank fingers, man. Cross fingers. I um. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. Um, just before I say anything, I just want to say that I love you all, guys, and um, I've been watching the show for like eight years now, so um, I've kind of grown up with it. But my question is kind of for all of you, um, now that Bob's Burgers is under like that Disney belt, if we were to ever see like a Bob's Burgers ride, what would we like see? <laughs> like, what would be your idea? That's, That's a good question. Thank you. We Love, oh, we love this question. I oh, mean, yeah. go go nuts. Imagine it, if you will, cast and I, crew. Oh, no, well, go. I, I, from the movie, I just thought that the Wonder Wharf, uh, that seemed like mm -hmm. we built that ride. That'd be fun. I think you would be in a small restaurant trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> the struggling How would business, it move? it's Is it, called. It's you would walk move. in and you would be like, I can't pay the bills. <laughs> and you, the stress would be what's so fun. <laughs> Not bad. I kind of like it. That's a ton of paperwork. And you got one? Um, I would do like the, the Star Wars ride where you get assigned, like you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so you're each assigned a different person and you're in the restaurant. You have to press like a lettuce oh. or a tomato <laughs> button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I would go crazy. I would do like you're inside Louise's mind in a room full of her like thoughts and fears and they come out, you know, I, I, all four walls are covered in, I don't know, Barobu and Kuchikopi and uh, yeah. And, and then we switch to another character and you walk through the interior lives of these characters, something like that maybe. That's pretty cool. Something trippy. Thank you so much. And you're on a horse <laughs> with a zombie. Yes. Hi, hello. Uh, so first off, I want to say thank you for all your amazing work with the show. I've loved every moment of Bob's Burgers. Um, so my question is, with the Bob's Burgers move now out and the success that has gotten, is there a potential for a sequel movie or any ideas for it? <laughs> We are, we are oh, very interested in doing a sequel movie. It was so fun to make the movie. Uh, we will wait until there's a really strong idea. We don't want to just, like, push and try to get it going now and then struggle and have it feel like it was, um, you know, just to make a second movie. We really would like it to be driven by the idea, and we don't have the idea yet. Um, so... No announcements here, uh, but we really, really enjoyed it. It was so fun to make that thing, so fun. So we'd be crazy not to make another one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, keep them short if you can, folks, because I want to make sure we get to everybody and we're running out of time. So you mentioned jobs. Um, so my <laughs> wife and I are filmmakers. Um, she's, she's over here. Um, I wanted to know, um, one of my friends, uh, Brett, was actually the editor for Bob's Burgers movie. Um, I love that movie so much. I wanted to know, how do we get in contact with you if we're trying to be like, how do I, how do I get a Contact is easy. That's on the website, right? Yep, at bentoboxent.com. Bentobox Entertainment. Job beautiful. postings are there, and also reach out with information and even resumes. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. They pay a recruiter. They have people uh, looking for you. We're looking for you. Hi, you, welcome. Hi. Do you want to hear my master plan? <laughs> yes. Okay, my master plan is there is a character in Independent Woman by the name of Marcy. I am Marcy. <laughs> um, are we ever going to see what she looks like? Because when Mickey robbed a bank, there were two female bank employees, and I was wondering if one of them was her, or will we see her? Can she make an appearance? Remind me who Marcy was in Independent Woman. <laughs> Sorry. She was the woman that Linda was talking to on the phone about bouncing the checks and having to... It wasn't Ginger? No. It was Marcy. It was Marcy. Thanks, Marcy, because I, I have that as a yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That sounds familiar. Um, yes, we're going to feature her in a four-parter. <laughs> I love 
it. Do you need a Marcy? Because I am a Marcy. She's gonna be off screen the whole time and you won't hear her voice. You were not supposed to break my heart today. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We're just having a little fun. We'll, uh, we'll have to let you know. We don't have plans currently to bring Marcy back. But you're Marcy, and we have another Marcy here who's very special to us. Um, okay. So a little we can competition. Share Marcy. Marcy's not a common name, so I, I love it. All right, good. Good. Thank okay. you for your Thank question. You. <laughs> Thank you. Hey there. Um, okay. Uh, first... Any chance you'll be going back out on the road? Mm, what do you think? Should we? Um, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I think, I mean, I'd be happy. I really liked it. doing that. That was really fun. We would like to do it again very much. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, haven't I've I've been able to meet all you guys. Uh, anyways. Who, uh, who, and, who, where, where, what show did you go see? I think uh, LA at the Ace. Okay. We played the Ace, the Orpheum, or the Odie. Uh, where, where did we play it? What was it? Wilton. A bell or the oh, Orpheum? The yeah, sorry, go on. Wilton. <laughs> oh, uh, anyways. Uh, what ven uh, what venue did you like that you just heard the most? <laughs> we'll perform there. We named every venue in L.A. Do, uh, do you think Tina would really want to be uh, one of the Disney princesses? Oh, Dan? Uh, yes. <laughs> Thanks for your but question. They, but but they won't let her. I know it's your because you're wearing. Where'd you get your Louisa dress? Did you make it? No, I bought it. Where? Uh, I think it was Etsy. Etsy. Yeah, I bought one for my daughter at Etsy because Disney won't sell Encanto dresses uh, at the Bippity Boppity Boutique because they're not considered princesses. Exactly. Boo. Ah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Wow. Straight Hi. Up controversy. What's your question? Hi. It looks good. You probably bought so, it the same. So I also have two. One is very short. I have stickers for all of you um, because you're all amazing and I love you. But my actual question is, which ad lib line made you go, oh, I wish I wrote that? Oh, God. All of them. <laughs> all of them. I mean, when Gene said... Uh, he, he references Salman Rushdie it, when Bob is in the wall in episode two. That was a very good example where you just say, that's better than anything we could have written. And, and, it, and it, in, in one moment, it expanded his character from the little boy you expect to a little boy whose references you can't possibly understand and yet somehow you buy. He sold it. What's your, so that was your second question. And the first question is, can you give us stickers? Yes, you can. Oh, I'm, I'm coming up. All right, coming up. What's your, but we'll move Faster. to the next question no, at the same kidding. time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll hand them out. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Here, take what pass it down. Okay. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, oh, what's the, your question? Oh, this was Hi. not um, what I was expecting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so dirty. <laughs> and I don't mean unclean. Hi, uh, sorry. Sorry, no worries. Um, I firstly just wanted to say thank you because I teach kids about puberty and the three kids really helped me get through that because it's a really hard job, but also you give me a lot of content for my lesson. So that's just what, something that I wanted to say. Thank you for doing that work. That's important work. <laughs> I'm happy to change jobs at any time though, but I think you've got a long line of people. So um, my question is actually for... Chris. You got to do 15 years of teaching kids about puberty <laughs> okay, before you get into time. animation. Okay. <laughs> um, my question is actually for Kristen. Um, I love you all, but um, you've been in so many shows that I love. What we do in the shadows. Last Man on Earth, Flight of the Concords. Um, so I, I don't want to ask you what show you love working on most, but can you tell me something that's positive about all, working on all of those shows? Oh, yeah. Um, well, uh, I guess the, the thing that I love most about them is that they're all a little bit uh, surreal and whimsical and, and just uh, weird, um, which is probably why they cast me. Um, yeah, I love 